This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one website building platform. The top half is giving very much potato sack. I never want to put this on my body. I need to just accept that I'm never going to be satisfied with my own DIYs. Where is it? There it is. It's so hard to get on. This is like the princess dress of my dreams and I also know with confidence that I am never going to wear it again. Hi friends, this week we're doing something I have realized is a bit overdue for me and that is a full-on in-depth closet clean out. I feel a lot of guilt about not wearing certain things in my wardrobe, making unwise purchases, getting rid of things that I could use but I just don't. Can you tell I was raised Catholic? It's too early to bring up your Catholic guilt. Pull back. I'm just trying to realize that while I always try to be a thoughtful, intentional consumer, sometimes things end up proving themselves not to be useful in my wardrobe and it's okay to let go of them. Let's get started. We are going to start with dresses. First up is this plaid baby doll dress. This is obviously a keep. I wear it all the time. This little patchwork baby doll dress is also a keep. I made it myself. Literally, I think I got this in like 2016. I don't wear it on any sort of regular basis. This dress I just recently thrifted. I love it. This dress is one of my favorites. I love wearing it as a dress and wearing it unbuttoned as like a vest. The bottom button did fall off recently, so this is going into the mend pile. This dress I have mixed feelings about. I tried to thrift flip it to fix the two big armholes and now the armholes fit, but there's like this weird bunching. I need to redo that or use this fabric for something else. This was a relatively recent secondhand find. It hasn't even really been the right weather to wear this yet. Hopefully I'll get some more out of this this fall. This is another one of my homemade creations. Does it get a lot of frequent wear? No. But am I ever getting rid of it? Absolutely not. No. This is another one that I did make myself, but this one, honestly, I did a terrible job. It's too short and the sleeves are really wonky. Overall, this is poorly made. So obviously I don't want to pass this on to someone else. I think I'm going to repurpose the fabric. This dress, I thrifted a handful of years ago. This is just my fabulous little princess dress, previously an 80s prom dress that I thrift flipped. I recognize this is like kind of a ridiculous thing to own, but I also know this is absolutely a keep. This dress, I really just thrifted for the skirt because I mean, look at this skirt, but the top half is giving very much potato sack. I want to either make the sleeves shorter or get rid of them or just turn the whole thing into just a skirt. This dress is so fabulous, but I never wear it. Maybe I'll try to give this to my sister. I love to try to pawn things off on my sister because then if I ever want it back, I can just like ask or borrow it. So it's like kind of a non-committal way of getting rid of something. I wear this a lot. I usually wear it unbuttoned as like a jacket over stuff. This is an easy keep. Now we are on to longer dresses, starting with this one. I thrifted this this summer for my sister's wedding rehearsal dinner. I really like it. So this is also something I will still be keeping. Next up, this fabulous, long, comfy cotton black dress. I wear this all the time. I wore it this week keep. Now we are into my longer homemade dresses and I can tell you right now all of them are going to be a keep but mend slash fix slash figure out how to not have these fraying seams that always roll up at the bottom. This is another homemade dress that is another keep but fix the seams and this is yet another homemade dress that is yet another keep but figure out how to fix it from getting all rolled and bunched up in the wash. This dress I thrifted a few years ago. Honestly, I'm kind of sick of it at this point, but I know I'll come back around to it and it's really comfortable and like kind of a timeless classic. I really don't think this will ever look bad. This one and the last one are in the same category. They look good, they're comfortable, they're versatile. I know I'll come back to them. Now we are on to our sleeved long dresses, starting with this one. I do feel like it kind of makes me look like a Raggedy Ann doll, but first of all, I am not opposed to it. And B, it is so comfortable. I took a nap in it this week. Next up, we have this plaid midi dress. This is one of my favorite dresses I own. It is truly like the plaid of my dreams. I wore this this week too. This is like my perfect witchy fall dress. I do wear it sometimes. The reason I don't wear it more is honestly just because my nipples are very visible <laughs> through this material. I would love to live in a world where I do feel comfortable with that, but I don't currently. So I think what I need to do is just find a comfortable bra. Next up, we have this absolutely dreamy maxi dress. This is like the princess dress of my dreams. And I also know with confidence that I am never going to wear it again. I thrifted it a couple of years ago. I wore it for my birthday that year, but it's not comfortable enough for me to keep around. I think this could find a better home with someone else. Finally, our last dress is this absolutely fabulous one. I love this dress so much. However, I did shrink it 
in the dryer. And that's on me, it said not to put it in the dryer, and I put it in the dryer anyway. The dress is slightly shorter, but the lining did not shrink. Luckily, the dress still fits me, but I'm just gonna have to alter the lining so it is hidden. I also have a handful of like lingerie and pajama dresses that I like wear as fashion. First up is this white lace slip. This is a keep, however, one of the straps has fallen off and it is currently attached with a safety pin, so it's going in the mend pile. Next up, we have this black mesh dress. This is a keep. I also love using this for styling, although I want to be real with you all and tell you right now that if I were not a fashion creator, I would not be keeping this because it's kind of uncomfortable and I rarely wear it in real life. Next up we have this grandma nightgown house coat. I like to wear it open like this, layered as like a jackety kind of layer. This vintage silk nightgown. This is another item I don't wear like super often, but I do wear it sometimes and it's such a special treasure. So we're keeping this. Our last item in this category is actually a two-piece set. First up, we have the top robe layer, which I realize is kind of similar to the last thing I just showed, but it's a very different silhouette. And then the other piece is this interior lace sleeveless nightgown, and we're keeping this too. I just thrifted it. I have tons of styling ideas for this. Now we are going to do overalls slash jumpsuit. First up, we have these skirt alls. They are super comfy and I wear them all the time. Obviously keep. This is my black version of pretty much the same thing. Also keep. Next up, we have some long midi length black skirt alls. These I think are so cool, but I feel like they look kind of weird on me. I've been hanging on to this because I feel like I should be, but not because it actually really provides a necessary role. Next up, we have my one pair of actual overalls with legs. I bought these on Impulse from Amazon years ago. And while I wouldn't recommend doing that, and in general, I try to avoid Amazon as much as I can, I'm proud of myself for at least making them last all this time. On the rare occasion that I buy clothes firsthand from something that is more fast fashion-y, I at least try to make sure it's something that is like a basic and a staple that I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of. And that has been the case for these overalls. And lastly, we have my little shorts jumpsuit. I thrifted it relatively recently and I have worn it throughout the summer. Keep. Hi friends, I am coming to you from day three of this closet clean out. Yes, it took three days to tell you about my website progress with Squarespace, today's sponsor. As you may know from other videos, I am also an artist and graphic designer and my old online portfolio was very weak. So I have been remaking it with Squarespace and it is finally almost done. I say finally, but it only took this time because of my own procrastination and indecisiveness. It was actually extremely easy to put it all together with Squarespace because their drag and drop fluid engine is so easy to use and their templates make everything look so beautiful. It will like coordinate the color palette of your whole site for you and give you these like really cool custom looking animated header options. As I've used Squarespace more and more, it has truly become my favorite website building platform I've ever used. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash beepworld or click the link in the description to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now we are on to t-shirts. This is probably my current number one most favorite t-shirt. Keep. This t-shirt, which I literally bought in high school, and this Etta t-shirt that I got at a vintage shop are my two other most favorite t-shirts. This t-shirt I thrifted in college and I just think it's really funny, but realistically, I never wear it anymore. It's just not quite quite as comfy as all my other t-shirts. This t-shirt I painted myself, but I just never wear it. Either I need to just accept that I'm never gonna be satisfied with my own DIYs and my own artwork and pass this on to someone, or try redoing it. This is another shirt I painted myself. This one I actually dyed this light pink color myself too. I did this in spring of 2020 when I had a lot of free time. I never wear it and I think it's because I dyed it this light pink and I just never wear this light pink color. This jersey t-shirt I thrifted because I wanted a jersey t-shirt. It was like the best option available at the thrift store that day, but I don't actually love it. I want it to be like big and baggy and oversized. This t-shirt was a thrift flip I made last spring. I thought I was just gonna like do this embroidery and then give this to a friend. But then once I did it, I was like, wait, this is so cute and I actually really like it. This is my Mitski merch tee. I'm a Mitski stan. This is obviously a keep. This is another one of my favorite t-shirts. I wear it all the time. I just got this. This is already one of my new favorites. This t-shirt, I find myself avoiding. The front of this is so boring, but the back is so good. I feel like cropping this could also make it look a little more intentional, a little more stylish. This is my new plain white tee to replace my old ones that were gross and had pit stains on them. This is one of my favorite t-shirts ever, but somehow the armpits 
have just like trapped my smelly armpitness. So if anyone knows of a way to resolve that issue, please tell me. I guess this will go in my like fix pile because I'm trying to fix the smell. This little embroidered mushroom tea was another one of my DIYs. And I feel like once again, I don't reach for it as much because it was my own work. I think for now, I'm gonna keep it. This is a tourist tea. The back is so sick, but the front is kind of boring, similar to the cowboy tea. This doesn't look like a fashionable t-shirt, but this is like, a camping t-shirt, you know? This is another tourist t-shirt I got on that same trip. This is so funny to me, like it's so dumb. I don't wear it that much now, but I'm simply not ready to let go of these t-shirts yet. And our last t-shirt is this one that I actually got in a Goodwill mystery thrift bundle. I got it for this video. It's quite comfortable and soft and it's also quite flattering. All right, now we are doing like nicer, cuter tops that aren't t-shirts. You get the idea, like tops such as this one. This top is so cute, but at this point I never wear it. I'm gonna try to pass this on. This top was kind of a random hand-me-down from a friend, but I don't think it's my style at all. I don't know if I've ever worn it out of the house. This was a pretty recent addition to my wardrobe and I wear it, so keep. This is a top I pretty rarely wear. I feel like I should be getting rid of this, but I like it. It's really different from anything else I have. So I think I'm gonna hang on to it for now. This shirt I got last fall. I think with a particular like witchy outfits video in mind, but the fabric is itchy. I think I need to get rid of this one. The question is, do I keep it around for witchy fall Halloween season first? This is like goodbye eventually, but maybe like a month or two from now. This top I just got in my other trying to style a Goodwill mystery bundle video. And I just thought this top was so pretty. Next up we have this black mesh top. I thrifted this years ago. I think I kept it around for a while for styling purposes in videos, even though I don't wear it in real life. But now I don't really use it in videos either and it's uncomfortable. I never wanna put this on my body. Okay, my mic disconnected for just two shirts here, but both of these tops I don't wear too often, but they provide some great variation. They're great for video styling and I wear them sometimes, so keep. And here are two tops I forgot to include originally because they were both already in my thrift flip pile. On this one, I want to adjust the sleeves and this one, I wanna dye a different color. <sighs> All right. Now we are gonna tackle sweaters. This is a classic, it's a staple. I've had this for many years. It will uh, continue to serve me for years to come. This black oversized mock neck sweater, a go-to staple for me in the winter. Keep. I just realized I was wearing this backwards for that whole clip. This is how it looks forwards. It looks pretty much the same. This is another classic, another timeless staple, dare I say. Keep. Now tell me why, after already owning the previous sweater, I also chose to thrift this sweater. I was like, I really want a warm toned, cozy, autumnal sweater, but it's just another red mock neck sweater that's less comfortable and worse quality. Okay, this is another sweater I got on my quest for a multicolored, warm toned, cozy fall sweater. And this one definitely got a little closer. The arms are quite fitted. It's kind of hard to layer something with long sleeves under this. It's a really good sweater. This one, I like it and I wear it. So I'm gonna keep it. Next up, we have my other quarter zip sweater. I feel like I don't reach for it a ton, but I do wear it sometimes. This blue v-neck sweater, this one and that one, they're like almost the same color, but I feel like they have very different vibes. This is a keep. Next up, is this sweater. This was a hand-me-down from an aunt of mine who was like, this feels like something you would wear. And she's so right. It does feel like something I would wear, but I never wear it. And I think it's because it's so hard to get on to my body. The head hole is so small. This has to go to the home of someone who is like, I don't care how small that head hole is. This sweater is perfect and I'll wear it. Next up, we have an easy keep. This is one of my favorite sweaters. I love everything about it. I embroidered this sweater myself. I'm very proud of it. Keep. Next up, this pink sweater. Because of the trend of pink and the whole Barbie pink thing going on lately, I keep talking on this channel about how much I actually don't really like or wear pink, but I do every once in a while. I definitely wear this less than some of my other sweaters, but I do wear it. I feel very conflicted about this one because I thrifted it relatively recently. However, it has sort of an odd smell that it has retained from the thrift store. So I would love tips from you all on how to get a distinct smell out of a garment. I think I'm gonna keep this around and see if I can get the smell 
out. And if I can't, it's it's gonna have to go. This sweater is another very conflicting item. It is so freaking cute, but the material is just like a little scratchy to me. It's made of wool. I'm one of the people who can't cope with wool. Here's our last pullover sweater. This was one of my favorite go-to sweaters back when mustard yellow was like the it color for artsy girls in the 2010s. I feel like it's time for a mustard yellow renaissance for me personally. Hello, coming to you from later in the day because I forgot to include this sweater earlier because it was on my boyfriend's side of the closet. I just got this in last week's video. As you saw, it is super comfortable. This is a shared item that will be staying in our closet. Now we're moving on to cardigans, which I only have a few of. We're starting with this little white cropped cardigan. It's just a good neutral basic classic cardigan. It's good to have around. In addition to my one neutral cropped cardigan, I also have one neutral big baggy long line cardigan. This cardigan was yet another entry in my quest for the perfect multicolored warm tone cozy fall sweater. And um, this is yet another miss. It is the itchiest of itchy sweaters. And I knew that when I bought it. I tried it on at the thrift store. I said, Liz, this is a scratchy sweater, but it's so cute. It fits the aesthetic that you want perfectly. And so I bought it and then it sat in my closet for a couple years being worn like maybe once or twice when I like forced myself to wear it out of guilt. Next up we have the cardigan that was the answer to my prayers. It's my favorite cardigan. I wear it all the time and it did fulfill my need for a cozy multicolored sweater that just gives that perfect fall vibe. Our very last sweater is another cardigan from Kina and Tam that I absolutely love. Yeah, 10 out of 10, no notes. It's another keep. All right, now, we're gonna do vests. First up, this brown suede one. Tried and true, it's a classic in my wardrobe. Obviously keep. This sort of quilted blanket utility vest. I also wear this all the time, in the winter especially, another keep. Okay, this vest is quite similar to the last one. Does this get very much use in my wardrobe? No. However, will I be getting rid of it? Also no, because <laughs> This is a hand-me-down I got from my cousins who wore it like in the 90s and I just have it now still somehow. At this point it feels like a relic and I know it's a sweatshirt vest and that's ridiculous but I'm not gonna get rid of it. And also I do wear it sometimes. This next one I really can't explain because like what? It's ridiculously large on me. This one can go. This vest, I love. It's just like a little too wide and boxy in the sides. I'm just gonna take it in an inch or so on each side. This is a vest I sewed myself out of some thrifted fabric. The fabric is so thin and papery, so it kind of feels like it's like made of paper. I could definitely line this. This is also going in the alterations needed pile. This knitted sweater vest is super comfortable, super versatile. I wear it frequently in the colder months. Keep. Finally, our last vest is this adorable little quilted tie front vest. Definitely a keep. Next up we are on to long sleeve button ups. First up this chambray oversized button up. I just recently thrifted this. It's a great little overlayer. Keep. I literally got this flannel freshman year of college but I always come back to it. This is the other of the two flannels that I own. This one also literally has like paint stains on the elbows. Where is it? There it is. This is like half smock, half actual functional shirt but it's useful for both. This next one is such a funny addition to my wardrobe because I literally won it in a giveaway from my friend Kathleen. But the problem is I don't actually find myself wearing it. It's so fun and so cool. Just not quite my style. Next up we have what I like to call my my disco shirt. This is my go-to long sleeve funky button up. Our last longer sleeve button up is this little chartreuse stripey one. This is one of my favorites. Definitely keep. All right, now we are on to the short sleeve button ups, starting with this one that is so cool. I love the pattern on this, but I just never wear it. I think I just don't really wear black and white. Literally, after I just filmed that last segment, it occurred to me that that shirt might fit my boyfriend and it feels like more his style. So I asked him if he wanted it and he tried it on and then he claimed it immediately. Next up, we have this nice big oversized short sleeve button up. These are a staple for me. And even if sometimes I'm not as drawn to them, I always return to them. This next one kind of has the same function. These are a summer staple for me. So having two of them feels like an appropriate amount. All right, this is a third shirt that serves basically the same function. I pretty much always choose the other two over this one. As much as I love tropical motifs, I think they just aren't me. Like I'm from Wisconsin, you can tell. Update, my boyfriend did also just take that shirt, so. 
that's sustainable fashion, baby. Another reason I did not need that last shirt is because I have this green button up that uh, fits me better. I can wear this like actually closed as a shirt as well as open over something like this. I wear this regularly. So obviously this is a keep. And finally, here's our last funky button up. This I frequently wear just closed as a shirt. And this was a thrift flip. I cropped it myself and then I embroidered this little flower on it. All right, y'all, it's day three. Let's get into tank tops. This one, I thrifted with a specific video in mind and I thought I would wear it outside of that, but I never do. This top, I wear all the time. It's super comfortable, keep. This one is almost the same thing. I wear them both constantly. This tube top, I DIY'd out of an old leopard print dress and I also made the top half of the dress into a different tank top. And I already gave the other tank top to my sister because I found myself just never wearing it and I never wear this either. This is one of my favorite tank tops. It's super comfy and I painted this graphic on it myself. This, I just thrifted this summer. It's a good comfy base. Sick. This top is really cute. I've had it since college, but I just don't find myself reaching for it ever now. This top I've had for a number of years at this point. Now I never reach for it. It's like a good basic tank top. Hopefully someone else will wear it more. This top bums me out because I made it myself and I really like the shape and the construction of it, but it's made of thrifted fabric and the material is just like not very comfy. This is my number one most favorite tank top. I made it in a thrift flip out of an old long sleeve shirt where this was originally the back and the parts that are the back were originally the sleeves. And I'm very proud of it, obviously keep. This is another one of my favorite tank tops. I've had it for a long time, it is sort of raggedy at this point, but I still like it and wear it, so I'm gonna keep it. This tank top I made myself, and I really like it, but the problem is I made it like exactly straight around instead of dipping down for the armpits a little bit, and so then it annoys me that it's this high up in my armpit. I need to just like do a little corrective re-sewing. This is another tank top I made myself, and I recently had to like repair these straps in the back, and I think when I repaired them, I made them a little bit too tight, so I think I need to re-redo the straps. This is yet another boring, plain, basic tank top, and it is yet another tank top that I wear constantly. This tank top is yet another Frankenstein DIY. These straps used to be long sleeves. I love the patterns, the colors, the fit, keep. This tank top I've had for quite some time and I still think it's cute, but I never reach for it anymore. This is my like one glamorous going out kind of top. It's good to have around for, for styling reasons and for a little variation. This top is absolutely amazing. I do not see myself ever getting rid of this. Come on, look, I, look at this. This is a bodysuit. I simply cannot be bothered to put it all the way on right now, but I just recently thrifted this. This top is a thrift flip and I think it is so cool. However, I didn't do the best possible job making it. There's definitely some puckering and some wrinkling and just some like kind of wonky sewing going on here. I don't know if I'm gonna try to like redo it or if I should just repurpose this fabric into something else. This is a tank top I thrifted relatively recently and I have already talked on this channel about how I don't love the color scheme, but I think I would love it if I just colored in all the pink stripes red instead with the fabric marker. So that is my plan. This was a hand-me-down from a friend. I wasn't really wearing it, so I did a little thrift flip to it to see if that would make me wear it more and it still didn't. This tank top is another thrift flip in progress. As you can see, it has kind of a weird hang right now. This is going back in the thrift flip pile. This I just got as a hand-me-down from my sister. And it was kind of one of those things where I was like, sure, I'll take that. But it's like not something that feels very me or my style or like something I'm drawn to at all. This one is also a hand-me-down from my sister that I feel kind of the same way about. This is another DIY thrift flip. And normally these circles are like cinched closed. They're little drawstring circles. But these strings recently came out in the wash and I haven't put them back in yet, but this is a keep. All right, now we're moving on to long sleeve tops, starting with this just plain black long sleeve t-shirt. I wear this frequently in the winter, keep. Next up, this elbow length knitted dark gray top, another classic well-made basic that I wear pretty frequently. This top I think is cute, but I just don't really ever wear it. I think honestly, because it's a long sleeve crop top and I never know what situation to wear those in. This top I have literally had since high school. It was a gift and I've gotten so much wear out of it over the years but it's definitely a little small on me. It's kind of one of those tops that I just still wear because I have it, but it doesn't really fit me quite right. This is my one and only long sleeve graphic tee. I wear it all the time. I designed this myself. I made it years ago, honestly, not my finest work to this day still, but I still really like the shirt. This is one of my favorite long sleeve shirts. I just think this was a very cool thrift find. I think this pattern is so cool and fun and unique and I love the colors. This is a recently thrifted pajama shirt, but I am using it as a shirt shirt. Can't wait to wear this once it gets cooler. This shirt is a hand-me-down from a friend. I realized it is Taylor Swift merch. I don't really engage with Taylor Swift 
very much in a meaningful way. So I feel like I misrepresented myself. <laughs> If I wear this, I obviously love a striped t-shirt. Honestly, I don't know if I love the colors of this, but like I definitely wear it. This is my other striped long sleeve tee. Honestly, I don't wear a lot of yellow, but I think this is a good shirt. This is a top I really struggle with because it's a mesh top. The bodice is double lined, but you can still kind of see through it more than I thought you could when I bought it, especially on camera, which is kind of inconvenient for being a fashion YouTuber. I never wear this for that reason. So I think I'm gonna have to let go of this. Now we are onto the turtleneck section of the long sleeves. First up, this black ribbed knit turtleneck. This is a perfect winter basic keep. This cozy oversized tan turtleneck. This is so comfy. I wear it all the time in the winter. Keep. This plain white turtleneck. Honestly, I got this for layering, but I want to be able to wear all my shirts unlayered as well. And I feel like this doesn't really work on its own because it just doesn't fit me very well. So I think I'm actually gonna pass this on to someone else. Lastly, I do have six brand new turtlenecks that I just got in a sponsored video with Keenan and Tam last week. I'm not gonna try these all on for you because they all fit exactly the same, but in different colors. I love all of these, but I don't need all six of them. So these two I got in a size up so they can live on my boyfriend's half of the closet. They're more in his sort of wardrobe color scheme. These three I am planning on keeping on my half of the closet. And this one I am planning to pass along to my sister because she wears a lot more pink than me and also she is a professional pastry chef so this adorable little cake embroidery is so perfect for her so I'm super excited to give this to her all right now we are on to our white blouse section and this does have its own section because I do have enough of them that it required it they all serve their own special purpose in my wardrobe okay first up we have just the plain white button-up it's a staple I use it regularly, keep. Next up, a short sleeve white button up. I actually never wear this because it's polyester and so it's really hot and makes me sweaty. Next up, we have my embroidered short sleeve white button up. This was embroidered for me by my lovely friend Kathleen. It's so long on me. I just need to hem this, but obviously this is a one of a kind homemade treasure, so keep. This is my short white puff sleeve blouse. This has actually become a very like versatile wardrobe staple for me. This is my long puff sleeve white blouse. Obviously serves its own distinct purpose. This is my sheer poofy white blouse. Honestly, this doesn't get all that much wear in my wardrobe, but I love it for styling videos. And also like, this is just way too amazing to ever get rid of. I would be so heartbroken to part with it. This is my super oversized collar puffy white blouse. And this is so comfy, I wear it all the time. And this is my latest addition to the white blouse collection. I like that the collar on this one isn't quite as oversized and frilly as the other one. And also the other one is a super light material. And this one is my much thicker and sturdier. So I feel like this is gonna be better for colder weather and that one's better for warmer weather. All right, it is a little later in the day and we are finally onto our very last section, which is coats and jackets. First up, a classic jean jacket. I don't wear this all that often, but I only have one jean jacket and I feel like it would be stupid to get rid of it. Next up, my one leather jacket. This is a total fall wardrobe staple for me. My one and only blazer. I don't wear it that much, but it's such a basic and a classic. And whenever I do need a blazer, it's great to have on hand. This is quite possible my favorite jacket I own. It's quilted, it's super cozy and lightweight. I love how it looks, I love how it feels. I wear this all the time. This jacket I ended up getting because it was on very steep clearance at a secondhand store. It was like a couple bucks and I think it's so cool, but ultimately it is obviously too big for me and I don't think it really works in like a cool oversized way and I never wear it. My classic chore coat jacket. This is also too big for me, but I think it kind of works because it's more relaxed and slouchy. I wear this quite often. My infant is sort of cowboy rancher jacket. This is a hand-me-down from my mom from back in the day. I don't wear this that much, but I just think it is so cool and unique, and I love that it's an old hand-me-down from my mom, so I'm can't see myself really ever getting rid of this. This is a good like go-to neutral everyday jacket. I thrifted this this summer. I've already worn it quite a bit. This is one of my most recent thrift finds. I just thrifted this and I'm so excited to wear it for fall. This is another very recent thrift find that I'm also super excited about. One of my favorite go-to jackets. It is the perfect neutral jacket to throw on over everything for when it's colder than a super lightweight like jean jacket, but it's not cold enough to need like a full-on winter coat. I got this last year when I think what I really wanted was something more like this, but I settled for this because it's what I found. And like, I think it's kind of cool, but then I ended up finding a jacket more like that. So I don't feel as compelled to keep this around. This is truly one of my most unique jackets just because it has such a cool, unique fit. Yeah, this feels like a real treasure to me. I really love the design of this. Now we're onto the longer coats. And as you can see, this one is much more of what I was actually looking for when I got that purple one. I found this one later, so I'm keeping this one. This one is great for when you want a lightweight jacket, but you still want that long over 
overcoat look. This is a great ankle length trench coat. This is also clearly too big on me, but I think it kind of works because it has a more relaxed, slouchy fit. This last coat, I am really torn on. I love how it looks, but it's not very comfortable. It's wool, so it's like a little scratchy. It's very warm, which could be a pro, but I feel like I'm always overheating in it. And also the zipper is broken. So because I don't have all that many bottoms and I am keeping almost all of them, I thought I'd just do a speed round showing these and talk a little bit about what I'm planning to do with the items I'm getting rid of. I think for a lot of us, it's easy to assume that when we donate things to the thrift store, they'll end up finding a new home with someone who will love and appreciate them. But the truth is only 10 to 30% of clothing that gets donated is ever actually sold. So your donation is more likely to end up in a landfill than find a new home. Even if I got something from the thrift store in the first place, I do also think it's worth putting in the effort to find these things a new home and prolong their life cycles. As I mentioned already, I am really big on swapping clothes with family and friends. Tons of my favorite clothes are hand-me-downs, and when I get rid of clothes, I always try to see if anyone in my life could use them. If there's no one in your immediate circle who can use it, you can also look for local clothing swaps or buy nothing groups, and of course, selling clothes online, at a yard sale, or even to a consignment shop is a way to make it more likely that your clothing ends up in the hands of someone who actually wants it. My plan for all of these clothes is to basically go through all of those options and then if I have anything left at the end, some things might then end up getting donated or I might even still try to repurpose them myself. All right, y'all, I have officially tried on every piece of clothing I own. I'd be very curious what you all think of this amount of clothing. Does it seem like a lot compared to normal or does it seem like less than you would expect for a fashion YouTuber? Or maybe it's both. I'd just be curious to hear your thoughts. Here are the bags of clothing to pass along to a new home, hopefully. Here are the bags of items to mend or alter or thrift flip in some way. And here is my closet before and after. Honestly, I don't know that it looks that different. I do also have like dresser drawers, but I forgot to film them beforehand. I honestly haven't gone through my wardrobe like this in a long time. Overall, I tried to do this thoughtfully. I hope this helps you think about your closet in a productive way, but also I hope this can let you give yourself some grace to let things go that are not serving any useful purpose. Thanks so much for spending all this time with me, and uh, yeah, I heard if you do leave a comment, watch another video like this one right here, or subscribe to my humble channel channel, you will never have to clean out your closet again because you'll realize you have all the perfect pieces you need and nothing else excessive that's just sitting there collecting dust that you feel guilty for not wearing.